Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice differential equation. We have x squared times y double prime equals y, and we're going to be solving for y values. y double prime is basically the second derivative of y, which we can also write in different ways. So if y is a function of x, then y prime would be the first derivative, which is f prime. You could also write it as dy over dx if you want. And the second derivative can be written as d squared y over dx squared. So we take the second derivative, multiply by x squared, and we get the function itself. So what kind of function satisfies this? That's what we're going to explore. Before we start solving this problem with the common usual method, let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative. I just wanted to share with you that this problem can be solved in two different ways, but the first method that I'm roughly going to uh, introduce is going to be a little harder. But for some problems, it's actually a really cool method. Anyways, now, we have x squared y double prime equals y. First of all, I want you to pay attention to both sides. We have x squared on the left and the second derivative. So the powers or the order of the derivative kind of match up. And on the right-hand side, we have no derivative and no power of x, which is x to the power of 0. So that kind of matches up. Uh, we'll consider that a little later. But let's go ahead and take a look at it from a different angle. So how about using something called power series, right? So if you assume that y can be written as a power series, which is like an infinite polynomial, we can differentiate it, plug it in, and find the unknown coefficients. So this is how it usually works. We write the y as, you know, something like n equals 0 to infinity, a sub n, x to the power n. This basically means that for n equals 0, we get a sub 0, and then a sub 1x, a sub 2x squared, a sub 3x cubed, so on and so forth. So the power and the subscript basically match up. So that's the first uh, that's the function itself, and obviously to get to the second derivative, we do need to differentiate it once first. So if we differentiate it, now instead of differentiating the whole thing, you can actually look at the sigma, which is basically the summation symbol, and you can just differentiate what's inside, right? You can go ahead and bring the n to the front, and then kind of uh, write this as n times a sub n x to the power n minus 1. But obviously, as soon as you do that, you're not going to be able to use n equals 0 because that's going to bring you back, and there's no x to the power negative 1. The smallest term has to have x to the power 0, which is a constant. So you kind of need to start your n at 1. Make sense? Okay. So for the second derivative, we're going to do this one more time, and then that's going to be n equals uh, 2 to infinity, because every time we kind of have to change the subscript or the index. And then we're going to bring this to the front, n times n minus 1 times a sub n, x to the power n minus 2. So this is the second derivative, right? We're going to multiply this by x squared now. And since x squared does not depend on n, we can easily get that inside the expression. So x squared y double prime is going to be x squared times this, n equals 2 to infinity, n times n minus 1, times a sub n, x to the power n minus 2, and now we can go ahead and put that inside. And when we multiply x squared by x to the power n minus 2, because this is kind of like a sum, that means uh, by multiplying uh, by the general term, you're basically multiplying by every term in the sum. Make sense? Okay. So, and again, x does not depend on n, so we're able to do that. If we have an expression that contains n, obviously that's a different story, right? Because that's going to change with every n value. So when we get that inside, it's going to be multiplied by x to the power n minus 2, and that is going to give us x to the power n. So we're going to get the following. n equals 2 to infinity, n times n minus 1 times a sub n times x to the power n. So kind of like the first expression, except it has some coefficient. And now we do want this to be equal to y. So we're going to go ahead and set it equal to y. And y was n equals 0 to infinity. And 
uh, a sub n x to the power n. Now one thing that's interesting about this expression is we can put them on the same side and set it equal to zero. So here's what you can do. You can go ahead and bring these together. Not completely together yet. I'll show you how to do that. But you can kind of subtract these two sigmas or these two summation symbols, right? The problem with that is they start at different points. So I can't really reconcile them or put them together under one uh, sigma because as you know, if you have sigma something minus sigma something else, then you can put them under the same sigma as long as you're go running through the same indices. So what we can do is we can expand a couple terms until we bring this to an uh, n equals 2. Make sense? So again, I'm not going to complete this whole thing, but I just wanted to show you this is a feasible, hopefully, approach. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that in parentheses first, but I'm going to expand a couple terms. So n equals 0 is going to give us a sub 0 x to the power 0, which is 1. So I can write it at x sub 0, basically. A sub 0, I mean. And then plus, uh, for n equals 1, this is going to be a sub 1 x. And then the rest can be written as n equals 2 to infinity a sub n x to the power n. Now, we can go ahead and bring these two together, but don't forget the minus sign, and you're going to get something that looks like this. n equals 2 to infinity n times n minus 1 a sub n x to the n minus a sub n x to the n, and then this whole thing. And of course, from that, you need to subtract a sub 0 minus a sub x. Those are individual terms, so no big deal. And then this is going to equal 0. In order for this to be 0, all the coefficients have to be 0, so on and so forth. You can kind of put these together like n squared minus n minus 1 times a sub n x to the n, kind of like this, under the sigma, and then so on and so forth. But notice that this term came up, and we'll see that with the second method too. I didn't call this the first method. Well, I, maybe I did. But anyways, this is the second method. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Remember, I told you that the degrees are matching up. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume that y can be written as x to the power r, where r is the, uh, the root of the characteristic equation, which we're going to get in a little bit. Differentiate it once, you get r x to the power r minus 1. That, that, that's kind of similar to power series, isn't it? And then the second derivative is going to be r times r minus 1, x to the power r minus 2. Great. So now let's go ahead and multiply this by x squared. That's going to give us... Uh, obviously here x to the power r, r, r minus 1, x to the power r, and that's equal to y, which is x to the power r. Put those together, you get r squared minus r minus 1 times x to the r equals 0. Obviously x to the power r represents any term, it's not going to be 0, this has to be 0. And from here we get two solutions. Using the quadratic formula, we get 1 plus minus the square root of 5 over 2. Yay, golden ratio. Awesome. So if we can write these as r sub 1 and r sub 2, we, we can kind of write our expression like this. We say that y is equal to x to the r, and obviously it could be x to the r1 or x to the power r2. But it also works with constants, like coefficients, because if you put a coefficient in front of it, it's still going to work. So you can kind of see sub 1 and c sub 2 and kind of put this together and you're going to get the general solution. That's going to be c sub 1 x to the power r sub 1 plus c sub 2 x to the power r sub 2. And that can be written as c sub 1 x to the power 1 plus root 5 over 2 plus c sub 2 x to the power 1 minus root 5 over 2. So that's going to be the general solution for our y value. And notice that this uh, doesn't specify c sub 1 and c sub 2. Those are constants, arbitrary constants, so you can pretty much pick anything out. You can even pick c sub 1 and c sub 2 both to be 0, because y equals 0 is a valid solution to this equation, as you can check. And here's the result from Wolfram Alpha, the same thing that we found, except for the fact that c sub 1 and c sub 2 are switched. I don't know why they did it, but this also gives you a good classification because classifying ordinary differential equations is also very important, uh, especially for solution methods. This is a second order linear ordinary differential equation, namely x squared y double prime equals y. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.